everyone. So uh, I thought I'd just do a little video just to um, catch up with you to show you where exactly whereabouts we are with the van. Um, there's, you know, we're at this sort of frustrating stage at the moment where I'm having to do lots of little jobs rather than following things through right away to the end. Um, you know, it's uh, you know, financially, it's it's really struggling to um, to actually be able to buy all the materials. Um, so I'm having to kind of like get to stages where almost um, getting to the point where obviously I have to buy stuff and then having to stop it there, move on to something else and um, you know, gradually build up the uh, the van and then obviously on a, on a budget to um, to try and complete it. So having to prioritise, you know, what materials and stuff I'm actually uh, buying at certain points. So um, I'm going to show you exactly where we are at the back, at the, with the van at the minute and then uh, just explain through what the thought process is in terms of doing stuff and um, yeah so you might see things in the video that aren't quite connected with um, certain points of, but uh, you know we say we're trying to do more of a, a video blog of building the van rather than a how-to video if you like but um, on, the, on the same vein but now to actually you know, show you the the bits that we struggled with or bits that we um, may find found difficult. So uh, yeah, let's let's show you through what we're what we're doing at the moment. Okay, so one of the things I need to look at and uh, and actually kind of think through is the positioning of where the the batteries and the, all the electrics and stuff are going to go. So you might have noticed that I've actually put um, a few buttons down on the floor just as uh, a bit of a guide, just to get a bit of a visual as to you know what sort of shape and layout I'm actually trying to create. So I've chucked some buttons down um, and what I'm looking to do is literally just do like a, a box section around the actual wheel arches because I'm looking to actually create like a shelf in order for the uh, the leisure batteries to sit on here and then have like an electrical section up on the wall. This is going to be like the garage part of the uh, the van itself and then uh, we'll have actually a top section like bed that goes across straight across here. Um, so this will actually form the actual garage of the van and the reason why uh, it's looking so big is because I've really got to use it for uh, tools for work uh, which is a major part of obviously having having this van but also being able to use it for leisure because um, I don't have the luxury of being able to have two vehicles so um, I need to be able to get all my tools in the back but also uh, allowing for uh, mountain bikes to be able to go in so we've got um, a bit of an indentation at the back so uh, a bit of an L shape uh, being created there so the bike's been able to come in here um, and then this section here I want to actually I've, I've turned the button upright so that it's you might see that it's actually slightly longer one shape and then thinner on the other so I've actually got it long section up um, and that allows me to get nice and close to the actual wheel arch um, and then actually create a box section and when it actually comes for the upright what I'm going to do is actually put um, ply on the side and actually create a pickup on the on the end. This square section here, I'm hoping to look at building that into a bench. So when um, that's going to be hopefully an area that we can actually have two people sat here and then two people sat on the swivel seats uh, facing the other way. And then that's actually the lid of this bench then becomes a removable section for the bed. Um, that's the sort of general thinking there because I didn't really want to actually just lose that space and then that that becomes like a storage area either a fridge or food or the fridge is going to come at the end here not quite 100% sure there so let's have a look at this far end so as you can see so that that would then become like the bench and then uh, bikes would be coming into there so look at this like sort of tire shape so we need to actually create uh, a box section for the, the bed to sit on. So I've measured these, marked these out, that's my sort of head height, uh, so that's where my head would actually come up to. So you can you can see here that it actually sticks out quite, quite far out of the band, so I need to think about like the finishing detail um, just on the end there.
Okay, so I need to uh, look at the second wheel arch and actually um, close this in. So we've done the uh, done the batten in, or actually battened in the wheel arch itself. Um, and what we need to do now is actually put some marine ply. I ran out of marine ply before. We didn't have enough material to actually cover it. So uh, what I've done is uh, bought some more, but only just like a small amount, just to cover the wheel arch. Okay, so this is the box in nice and, nice and done now. Um, what I chucked on was this piece of uh, sort of roofing batten on the side there. Uh, extended the ply so it actually comes out a little bit further, just because this is where my leisure batteries are gonna go. So it just gives me a bit more of a platform without losing too much of the actual um, like bottom space. So I just extended out, put a batten on and then screwed into the side with a, a countersunk uh, pilot hole and then a screw into the side. And then these are just literally just been tacked on. Done. Popped a bit of PVA behind here as well just to kind of hold it in place as well. Um, probably not necessary but it's always good to um, say chuck some PVA in there anyway and uh, that'll help secure it in place. Okay, so we've installed the um, the timbers inside the actual van. Uh, so I think in the last one of the last videos and stuff, we actually had the timbers going across and in the bed. And then I didn't actually do a video on the on the actual timbers itself because um, you know, this was a bit of a headache just kind of working out exactly what was going to how it was all going to work, and um, so lots of fiddling around. They've got this uh, sort of box shape here. This box shape here has been put in there because of the uh, the bike wheels. So the bike is actually gonna you know, be able to sit in here. So we've got two bikes um, and then the back tires kind of sit in this sort of cavity here. And then we didn't wanna have this coming across all the way across the, the, the back of the van. So uh, what we've decided to do is uh, tuck it back and then actually have a, a seating area in here. Um, hopefully a seating area where I can actually fold back up and um, because of that folding back up, I need to have some sort of supporting wall. Now, I had to play around with this quite a lot, you know, change the ideas a fair bit, whether it was actually hinges sitting on this timber here or, or what. So the plan is now is to have cladding coming across. So we've actually have you know, timbers to pick up that cladding and then return in on here um, and then on top of that cladding you're going to have like a, a platform here which will have hinges in order for the um, the bench to be actually pivot back up. I'm hoping that we can have a, a bit of padding at the back and then padding on the seat and as it folds up the, the, um, the actual foam itself sits inside and then that's actually out the way that gives us a bit of room within the sort of kitchen area. Notice, notice that I've actually doubled up on the timbers here. Um, this was the original height, which I calculated for the what I needed for the wheels, and then just added an extra bit just in case for whatever reason I up upgraded the bike and the wheels ended up a bit bigger. Um, and then I kind of thought about, well, what is the actual maximum height that I could potentially go to, plus the what sort of worktop thickness, uh, which kind of led to putting another timber on there because um, that then allowed us to actually have a, a worktop that would go at that sort of level 
rather than having like two sort of tiered stages and faffing around with those kind of things uh, so that's what led to putting another timber on top rather than taking it all down recutting it etc etc just decided to chuck another couple of timbers on top and uh, the plan would be then to put the the worktop on top of that and then potentially having a sort of shallow sink in there as well which um originally i was thinking whether we're actually going to have a sink but you know that's that's the sort of general plan i think now is to actually potentially put a sink in there and it's also near the electrics as well so it kind of works out quite well to um to be able to hook those up um which is wicked so um so i do need to i need to clad this um and i also need to think about the actual um what it's actually going to pivot off in terms of the hinges so i need to bear that in mind that's why you've got these like reinforced sort of timbers lower down so i need to buy the uh, buy the cladding and whatever timber it is that i'm going to reinforce and the uh, hinges off for the uh, bench so i need to come back to that Okay, so I'm going to secure and uh, glue down the vinyl now to the floor. Now, what you can use is a sort of a vinyl adhesive just to cover the whole floor, or you can kind of use like a, a tape or some sort of um, adhesive around the perimeters um, to seal it in, depending on obviously what type of vinyl and stuff you use and the sort of surface area. And if it's quite thin, you know, you can get these sort of bubbles and stuff in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the perimeter, but you know, a little bit in the middle, etc. And I'm going to use um, this stuff here. So it's a uh, trim fix adhesive. Now, the reason why I'm using this is because um, I originally bought this for carpet. Um, now, I want to actually kind of utilize having this um, rather than having to actually buy other stuff. So you now this is a high temperature adhesive. Um, so no, it works really, really well with um, sort of high temperatures. Um, not that I actually need that, but um, you know, it's usually uh, designed to obviously you know fix back trim and carpets, etc., um, and headliners and bits and pieces like that. So I'm going to be using this stuff to secure it down, which I think it would be absolutely fine. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, spray it all on the actual vinyl first. Um, so that's why I've kind of set up this here so we'll go around the actual perimeter on the uh, on the vinyl and then uh, I need to actually do the same in the van so it's actually got two surfaces to actually bond to and then I'm actually going to secure it in place and then hopefully you obviously don't have any sort of uh, major major bubbles and stuff in place so uh, gonna give it a whirl
Okay, so one of the things I didn't like the look of was um, this sort of clinical look. Um, so you can see it's like really, really white. Um, I did that as a sort of an undercoat uh, in order to actually paint on top of it. Now, this uh, area at the back here, um, you know, I, I really don't like the way it looks. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna recycle these boards that I actually took out originally. Uh, that was the one with the carpet on. And uh, I'm gonna actually put the board on the back with the carpet on, on here. Um, and then I'm gonna put it in that recess there. And then planning to paint the side here as like a featured color. And this one is a featured color. So, um, you know, materials are scarce because of this bloody virus and everything. So it's really hard to get hold of materials, but also, you know, money's tight as well. So I think um, what I'm going to do for this stage is I'm going to recycle these boards. And um, I th no, I think it looked pretty good. Okay, so the boards have gone in and I must admit I really, really like it. It's really cool. Um, quite difficult to see because of the light. But, um, you can see that, say the carpet's gone in. So, well, when I say carpet, it's, uh, you know, using the old material uh, from what was in the van previously. And then I've obviously stenciled it into, into shape. Um, so yeah, really, really cool. So, um, couple of things that I used um, in order to actually you know get the get the shapes right um, use one of these so this is like a, a shape finder um, you might have seen them around so basically um, it's a so I'm just gonna unlock it and uh, bring it back to so this is a, um, a shape finder uh, so the idea of it is that you're able to um, you know stencil out sort of profiles um, now with it unlocked you're able to you know, push push it into shapes and then just be, basically be able to sort of stencil uh, stencil around the edges I'm not really doing a good example here because my um, I'm trying to do this one handed but you get the gist of it and say you be able to push in get the profile underneath around the edges etc not everything's going to be really symmetrical. Then the other thing you used was one of these, um, it's just a, a bevel, adjustable bevel, um, yeah, it just makes it nice and flexible. You find, put it up against the, um, find the shape and tighten it up. And of course then that's your, um, that's your angle. So you're able to actually um, make, that's your, Rather than it being a, a complete 90 degrees, you've got your angle and then you're actually able to extend that on your on your measurement to find the next point. So there are you know, a couple of tools that I've used just to get all the measurement. Of course, just measuring the distances uh, accordingly. So, yeah. Okay, so today I'm gonna have a look at uh, painting the sort of featured walls. Um, so I'm looking at painting this wall here and this wall here. Um, so I've decided to do a bit of a featured wall, so I'm going to go very loud because um, I like I like loud colours, and I'm going for um, what's known as Moroccan orange, which is this colour here. Um, now I love this I love this orange, absolutely adore it. Um, very loud, so it's very me, and it's very Megan, um, and that's the most important thing. Is obviously it's you know a bit of our character in the van, but it, it's in the garage, it's not going to be in the main living compartment. Um, like I say, it's going to be a featured, featured wall, so it'll be this wall and that wall. Um, and it'll go well with that the sort of darker grey and the sort of grey matting. Um, a bit like um, sort of super dry colours. Um, and other brands, of course. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'm going to do a bit of prep work. So I need to take these, um, these boards out, that board out, uh, these ones that are actually up against the wall and um, get things prepped. Okay, so I'm just opening up the, um, the paint. You ready for it? 
Oh my god, look at that. That is insane. Love it. Just just prepped inside, put a little bit of um, tape around the outsides. Um, I am actually going to put it in a, like, it's all going to be covered up by um, either boarding or you know, um, like finishing trim. But, um, you know, it's just to you know, keep it nice and neat and, um, you know, trying to stop any sort of overspill the best we can. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to going to get it in the pan and uh, we'll get it on the walls and see what it looks like. Hopefully it's going to be really, really good. I am so excited right now, it's unreal. <laughs> this is insane. Look at this colour. Wow. All right, moment of truth then. No turning back now. That is amazing. I am not gonna lie right now. Love it. Now that is epic. Well, We'll check back soon, see how uh, how else we get on.